Man, it's been a rough couple of days. Let me just say, too, my heart goes out to Breonna Taylor's family. Um, and also, you know, there's, there's a lot of raw emotions out there, and I, I just really hope everybody stays safe. Um, in fact, it's been a rough whole week. Uh, last Friday night, like, started promisingly. It was the premiere of my new show. It was Rosh Hashanah. I mean, I was, I was all ready to ring in 5781, getting drunk and watching myself on Peacock, right? Then this news broke. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg has died. Oh, man, that still hurts. I mean, the only thing standing between us and calamity was 70 pounds of fierce intellect and a lace collar, and we've lost her. Do you guys think 2020 is bad? 5781 is gonna be a motherfucker. The beloved justice's last wish was that we wait until after the election to fill her vacant seat. So, out of respect, Mitch McConnell announced that he would not. Instead, he'll fill that seat while it's still warm with someone who will trash RBG's legacy and everything she fought for to her dying breath. Why? Because he can. <laughs> you want to hear something funny? <laughs> this is so funny. This kind of makes me laugh. The Democrats? The Democrats think they can ask him not to. <laughs> Call your senators. Tell them how bad this is. Tell them to abide by Judge Justice Ginsburg's last honorable wish. One of the things that Indivisible is asking, they want people who care about her legacy to bring flowers, to bring mementos, to bring things. Mm memorializing the justice to their senator's office at home. That is so important. Oh, flowers? Well, this stops my dead in my tracks. I was going to replace that unfortunate lady with the lady who shares my own conservative predilections. Now I am castigated and must mend my errant ways. I tell you, gentlemen, this is unmitigated. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work, guys. Mitch McConnell and your Republican senator don't give a fuck about your flowers. They have the levers of power, and they will use them on behalf of the voters who put them there. Power comes from voting and winning, not losing and begging. Conservatives got power by being masters of the long game. Man, oh, God, I almost admire them for this. They're so good. Because in the 70s, they were like, Roe v. Wade is wrong, and we have a 40-year plan to fix that. They, they spent decades training up conservative judges practically from the cradle. Look around you, little child. One day, you're gonna grow up and get rid of all this progress for women. Yes, you will. And the blacks. Yes, you will. <laughs> and this brings us to presidential elections, where conservatives are laser-focused on one thing above all else. Judges. Circuit judges, Supreme Court judges, American Idol judges, any judge that's gonna sit there until they die. And the left, the left cares too much about all the other shit. No matter how trivial, the thing is we cannot focus. For instance, in an election, we act like we're the prosecutor and our nominee is guilty until proven innocent, right? Mrs. Clinton, on the night of January 28, 1996, did you or did you not say the word super predator about that bill you did not write, nor did you sponsor? Oh, you find that funny? I don't like your laugh. Your Honor, move to strike that latest laugh. We do not find it attractive. Hmm. Sorry, I have to indulge sometimes. <laughs> But not conservatives, man. Conservatives, here's what it is. Conservatives act like, like they're inmates in a prison that's been built by the cultural left, right? And it, its walls are made of abortion, uh, gender-neutral bathrooms, gay wedding cake, like black president. And they don't care who the nominee is. They, they'll vote for anyone who has the key to let them out. And that key is the power to nominate judges in their 30s who will serve into their 90s and take us back to the 50s. And I know, I know, guys, I know to us it makes no sense. It just doesn't make sense that so many people would vote for such an obvious liar and a moron. They know what they're doing, though. They, see, they aren't voting for the lying moron. They're voting through the lying moron for what they really want, control of policy for the next 50 years. Don't take my word for it. Take the lying moron's word for it. The appointment of a United States Supreme Court justice was much more important to the voters than I thought because they will set policy for 50 years. Powerlessness doesn't feel good, you guys. I know, I know. It's, it's, it's why we're feeling such raw emotion about the decision on the Breonna Taylor killing. The cops that took her life are protected by contracts their own union helped write. 
Why do cops keep doing the things they do? Because they can. Of course we're gonna feel powerless. Look, we can march and make some progress. By the way, which we should do, absolutely. That's very important, don't get me wrong. But real justice, real justice is also gonna take us playing the long game and taking power. So let's just keep that in mind as we get closer to this election. Okay? And I know, I know, look, don't get discouraged or feel like nothing we do makes a difference or, you know, it doesn't matter who's in the White House. Yes, it does matter who's in the White House, all right? So don't grumble. You heard Obama, he said, don't boo, vote, right? He didn't say, don't vote, boo. No, those are very different, okay? <laughs> <laughs>